Welcome to another episode of Graphing with Mr. Molden. Today we're going to look at the investment domain graph. Uh, we are going to be looking and thinking as we are in businesses. So, real quick, what are businesses seeking at all times? That's right, profits. They are in business to make money. That's the only reason they're in business. The investment demand graph uh, uses this profit motive um, and shows this profit motive. Uh, now, businesses, when they are seeking investments, they're seeking a way to increase their profitabil profitability. Uh, that's a hard word to, to get out at times. Uh, so, when they're looking to invest, like anybody that's looking to invest, they are looking as a way of giving up current spending, current profits, in order to make more profits in the future. So what type of things would they be willing to invest in? New factories, they can make more stuff. More employees to make more stuff. Uh, new machinery to make better stuff um, and more stuff. New technology uh, to make better stuff or more stuff better. Uh, so these are all things that your average business is not going to have millions of dollars laying around to build a new factory or buy the latest, greatest gadget. Um, so they have to take out loans. Well, loans aren't free. They come at a cost. Um, and we will look at what that cost is and how it relates to investment. And then we'll look at what could cause business investment to change besides just the cost of a loan. And we'll uh, look at how it looks like a, just a normal demand graph. Now, this graph, while it sounds complicated, um, isn't um, unless you make it. Keep it simple. Uh, that's the key with all AP graphing. Keep it simple. Uh, know how to label it, know what it's showing you, and keep it simple. What does an investment demand curve look like? Well, we have what will be the price of investment. In this case, it's going to be real interest rates. Why real interest rates? Well, we're giving out loans. Loans take time. We have to adjust in rent interest rates for inflation. On the bottom, what are we giving out? What is our quantity? Well, investment. It's called an investment demand graph. So, don't overthink this. All right now, this graph, one line. It's an investment demand graph, so it's gonna be a demand line. Demand for what? Investment. It spells dig. Keep all right, remember it that way. All right, demand for investments. So now, this graph is a demand graph, which shows that at high prices, in this case, high interest rates, businesses aren't willing to take out a lot of loans. Why? It costs the money to pay them back. Businesses are profit-seeking entities. That's a high cost. It's gonna cut into my profit. Not gonna do it, all right? As interest rates fall, my, I am more willing to take out profit, to take out a loan. Why? Higher rate of return, it's easier to uh, make a profit at these lower interest rates. I'm more willing to take out that loan and take on that risk because that's what loans are and what an investment is. It's a risk, All right? I'm not guaranteed to make money back on these. So lower interest rates, more profitability, more margin for profits, All right? So if it's a change in the interest rate, I'm just going to move along the line. Right, which would change investment levels and change business spending. That's important for later. All right, now what could cause this line to move? Well, anything that's gonna affect my ability to make profits. So, four things really uh, could affect this. Business taxes, if I have to pay more taxes, that's an increase in cost, decrease in my willingness to invest, shift to the left, All right? Uh, and the opposite is true as well. Uh, new technology. New technology always makes us want to uh, produce more because it makes me more efficient. Otherwise, we wouldn't use it because it's not a new technology. All right, so new technology would increase this investment. Uh, changes in capital stock. All right, so what is capital stock? Uh, capital stock is how much stuff I have uh, in a warehouse somewhere. It's inventory that I have left over that hasn't sold. So. Uh, changes in capital stock. Uh, if I have a lot of capital stock laying around, not going to invest much. If I have a little bit of capital stock, I'm selling my products. I'll invest to produce more. And lastly, changes in expectations. What I think the business conditions are and what I think they, uh, how they're going to improve. 
So these four things will cause the whole line to shift. A change in, not nominal, but a change in real interest rates does not cause the line to move. A change in real interest rates is a move along the line. A change in something other than real interest rates, these four things, causes the line to move. So keep this graph simple.